guys, we're the Floaters, and today we're going to be showing you how to make homemade root beer the right way. We're also going to be talking to you about the process of fermentation, so let's go to the kitchen. So let's begin making the root beer. The first thing you'll need to do is gather all of your ingredients. Sway! This stands for sugar, water, extract, and yeast. The first thing you'll need are your three measuring cups, a towel, a bowl, brown food coloring, your handy dandy two liter, and your funnel. But we didn't have a funnel, so we made a hole in a cup. The first thing you do is put a cup of sugar into the two liter bottle. <laughs> Don't do that. Next, you will get one and a half ounces of water. Next, you will microwave it for 20 seconds. When the water is done heating up for 20 seconds, you're going to take it out and pour it into a small bowl like After this. You'll fill up one fourth of a teaspoon with yeast. Next, you will pour it into the water and stir it. You will stir it until the yeast dissolves in the water. After that, you put a towel over the yeast and water mixture for 15 minutes. So now you have activated your yeast. All you have to do is put the yeast and water mixture into the bottle. And you want to make sure to tilt it to all parts of the sugar so it can fully absorb. Next, you will fill the bottle one-fourth of the way full with room temperature water. You need to shake it slowly so the mixture dissolves. So then you will continue filling the bottle until there's only two inches left at the top. After you fill the bottle up with the water, add your food coloring in. After that, you will need to put your root beer into an area that is 70 to 80 degrees. Voila! You made root beer. Just wait two days for it to ferment and then it will be nice and tasty. But before you can drink it, you need to make sure to refrigerate it before it gets to be too fermented. And also so it is nice and cold to drink. Ferment, what is that? Fermentation is the process by which molecules such as sugar or glucose are broken down into oxygen. The yeast produces ATP in the aerobic respiration phase when the yeast consumes the oxygen and glucose. The yeast uses ATP to fuel the anaerobic respiration phase. Fermentation is then used to make our root beer. <laughs> what are the differences between the two phases? The aerobic respiration phase is in the presence of oxygen and produces a large amount of energy. Carbon dioxide and water are produced as a waste product. Anaerobic respiration takes place without the use of oxygen and produces a small amount of energy. <laughs> Alcohol or lactic acid are produced as waste products depending on the amount of cells that are active. So in the equation of fermentation, C6H12O6 is glucose, 2C3H4O3 is pyruvate, plus 4H 2CO2 plus 2CH, CH3, CH2OH, which is ethanol. Fermentation is the carbon dioxide produced by yeast. It has to do with root beer because root beer produces fizz, which is what fermentation causes. Fermentation also creates a thing called ethanol, which also gives root beer its yummy flavor. 
In this equation, glucose is on the left side of the arrow, and it's the reactant. And on the right side of the arrow, it's pyruvate, and pyruvate is the product. Glucose produces pyruvate, and then on this side of this arrow, pyruvate is the reactant, and ethanol is the product, and that is because pyruvate then transfers into ethanol. Yeah. <laughs> the numbers at the beginning of each element are necessary because it allows us to know how many of each They're, element. Okay. For example, in H2O, there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. There's a two after the H, so we know that there are two hydrogens. So, since there is a 2 in front of the C and the 3, then we know that you would multiply 2 by 3 to get 6 carbons. Speaking of H2O, which is water, water is a bent molecule due to the lone pairs present in oxygen, two hydrogens and one oxygen. It is bent because the extra electrons that cause the bent shape. On the other hand, carbon dioxide is linear, one carbon and two oxygens. Carbon is a positive charge. They all connect because they are even electrons, however, they are balanced. Nothing is a tetrahedral shape, one carbon and four hydrogens. Carbon is a negative charge and hydrogen is positive. Four arms are positively charged, pushing off each other. Wait, but what does pyruvate and methane have to do with root beer? When the yeast consumes the sugar, the yeast turns into pyruvate and methane. Pyruvate is a chemical compound produced by the aerobic respiration phase. Wait, but how does methane and pyruvate have to do with root beer? When the yeast consumes the sugar, it then turns into pyruvate and methane. Pyruvate is a chemical compound formed by the aerobic respiration phase. Methane is a gas that smells of toots and rotten eggs. It has the molecular shape of a tetrahedral. Then carbon dioxide. Then that turns methane into carbon dioxide. Or alcohol. Then that turns into ethanol or alcohol. Methane and pyruvate are also tied together because when pyruvate is broken down, the methane smell is made. It smells a little like this. <laughs> Do you ever get tired of sitting in a boring classroom learning about molecular shapes? Well, now all you have to do is remember this cool rap by the water bugs. Yo, 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 it's the water bugs. You might be smart, but did you know that molecular shapes make up H2O? Water is bent linear, but that information doesn't make you a master. You still gotta know that H2O is shaped by the individual elements. When there is a lone pair, you know that it is bent linear, tetrahedral, linear, trigonal planar, and trigonal pyramidal are the other ones you can't forget. Is it electronegativity? Yeah, you bet. Electronegativity shifts the molecules just like water in the pools. This was brought to you by the water bugs. Hello, welcome back. Two days have passed, and now our root beer is finally done. We know that this was a chemical experiment because there were bubbles in the root beer. The carbonation allowed the <laughs> bubbles to happen. <laughs> However, there are many different ways for carbonation. Other ways to carbonate root beer are by dry ice or forced carbonation. In forced carbonation, they do not use the leftover yeast sugars to directly put carbon dioxide into the bottle. Instead, they use a funnel or a nozzle to insert carbon dioxide directly into the bottle. Dry ice is a frozen form of carbon dioxide. When dry ice touches anything that's warmer than itself, then it will start to bubble or react. It, it might, might even turn, turn into, into a gas, gas or smoke. Is there anything you would change about your brewing experiment? We think our trials went pretty well, so we don't think we would change much to our experiment. If we were to do anything, I think that in the beginning of the fermentation process, in our first trial, we would add a little bit more yeast. It tastes kind of minty. Do you like it? Yes. 
It tastes kind of better than um, store root beer. Forget about A and W. The floaters are here. That was probably. But before you can drink it, you need to make sure to refrigerate it before it gets to be too fermented. Well, that's the freezer. <laughs> and a funnel.